Good morning, everyone. I am Pradeep Sindhu, CEO and co-founder of Fungible. Today, we want to announce cloud-native scale-out fungible data centers. What is a fungible data center? It is a data center where compute, memory, and storage are disaggregated. Resources are organized in a small number of server types, with each server type responsible for a specific resource and powered by the fungible DPU. Each server type is deployed in a scale-out manner, consisting of many instances. And all server instances are connected over a high-performance true fabric that allow these resources to be composed dynamically and to execute practically any workload efficiently as well as at high performance. Now, a fungible data center is inherently multi-tenant because its resources can be dynamically partitioned into ultra-secure, bare-metal, virtualized data centers. Fungible data centers address systemic inefficiencies in existing data centers stemming from the use of a compute-centric architecture, which doesn't work so well in a data-centric world. Specifically, fungible data centers will improve the agility of deployment the security of infrastructure as well as of data, performance of data-centric workloads by anywhere between 10 times to 20 times. They will improve the reliability of network and storage dramatically. And finally, the economics of data centers by somewhere between a factor of three and a factor of 12. So how do we achieve all these properties? The key is a hyper-disaggregated architecture enabled by the fungible DPU. The fungible DPU solves two fundamental problems in today's data centers. The first one is to enable efficient execution of data-centric computations that are today performed inefficiently by general-purpose CPUs. The second one is to enable highly efficient interactions between hyper-disaggregated nodes. To complete our vision of fungible data centers, let me turn to my co-founder, Bertrand Serle, to discuss composability. Composability is a central concept in computer science. You compose atomic instructions into functions, and the functions into more functions, more capable functions, and that's how all software gets done. Now, for hardware, if you want to create a data center, you are going to add computers, thousands of computers, to get the scale-out effect that you want. Now, in order to add a computer, you first need to pick the configuration, how much disk it has, the RAM, and so forth. And then you need to order it, and then it gets delivered, and you need to install it. The whole process can take weeks. It's also not very flexible, because when your workload changes, you need to order different servers. So to address this lack of flexibility, people have been looking at virtualization. With a virtual machine, you can define the computer you'd like to have for your given workload. So that's good, but virtualization is implemented with a hypervisor that maps the low-level storage and networking calls into um, the bare metal um, networking and storage calls. And that translation process is fairly slow. So here comes the DPU to provide more flexibility. So this is how it works. For each CPU, you add a DPU, and the DPU is going to remap all the low-level calls in hardware. And because it's in hardware, it's super efficient. So let's look at an example with um, storage. OK, the storage virtualization, the storage composition. So the CPU boots. When it boots, it tickles the DPU that's attached to it. The DPU talks to the control plane, and the control plane has a mapping that says for each CPU what boot image it should boot from. That boot image is transferred to the DPU, and the DPU gives the CPU the same boot image that the DPU would have had if the disk was attached. And now the boot can proceed on the DPU. 
The same thing happens with networking. So at the end of this process, for both storage and networking, the CPU thinks it has a certain set of NICs, a certain set of overlay, underlay, a certain set of volumes, as if all those things were directly connected to the CPU. In fact, all of them are proxied via the DPU. Now, because the DPU is totally programmable, we can compose GPUs, FPGA. It's all a small matter of programming for the DPU. Now, given your workload, you define what the composer should compose. All your resources are logically disaggregated. Your storage on one side, your servers on one side, your GPU on another side. You use a composer to provision for the workloads that you have. All those computers and those servers connected with the DPU get composed in just a matter of seconds. When you boot your server, its proper environment appears as you expect, with all the NICs it expects and all the storage and the volumes you expect. Not only we can compose storage and networking for your workload, but we can record this composition and create a recipe or a template that you can tweak later. There are many parameters you can tweak, but one of them is how many instances of your server you have. And so that means when your workload expands, you can just with one click reapply your recipe and you get your increased workload. Very, very easy to use. What are the benefits of this approach? The first major benefit is performance. All the composition is done by the DPU, is done in hardware, and the DPU offloads from your CPU. So you run at bare metal speed, no hypervisor in the way. The second benefit is that it's cheaper. Because you avoid the need to overprovision your servers, you get the benefits of pooling. It's cheaper because you have fewer SKUs. You don't need to have some big servers with a lot of disks and some little servers with little disks. No, you, you can just have a massive reduction in the number of SKUs. But the last big win is agility. You can rearrange the servers for your given workload in just a few minutes. This is to be compared to weeks in the traditional way where you roll in a new server in your data centers. So this is why composability is so important. And we believe all data centers will become fungible data centers enabled with DPUs and composition.